Jim, I really want to understand the universe and the structure of reality, and I know I've got to deal with quantum mechanics and I, for the very small, and I've got to deal with the general relativity for the entire universe. You've introduced the concept of the wave function of the universe, which I don't understand. I can't imagine how you can have a wave function, which I understand for subatomic particles, for the entire universe. To understand what a wave function is, let's first begin with ordinary quantum mechanics. Okay. Right? If we have an isolated system, it has a quantum state, and it's described by a wave function. The universe perforce is an isolated system because there's nothing outside it. Therefore, we expect that it, too, uh, should have an analogous quantum mechanics that has a, uh, something in it which specifies the state of the system, which would be a wave function of the universe. So it's a very natural concept. The key difference is that um, most wave functions, you know, ordinary, in, say, the theory of U, work in a background space-time. So the wave function changes with time. It describes how probabilities of where you sit, for example, would change in time. But this is supposed to be a wave function of space time. Right. That includes um, all those degrees of freedom. Uh, and therefore, it isn't in any background. So the, wave, the argument of the wave function contains the gravitational, the quantum gravitational degrees of freedom that in appro for appropriate wave functions would describe classical space-time and reduce to the ordinary notion of quantum state. When you're saying about describe, what does describe mean? Does describe mean some general structure, or does describe mean the absolute history of every piece of foam that's floating on this river? That's a matter of coarse graining, as it said. Yes. You can have a description that describes every piece of foam included in the wave function. Very we wouldn't know how to calculate that. A superfine grain. Right, superfine grain. So, but the universe is remarkably... So conceptually, that in, in principle, you could do that. That's right. In principle, so I, you could do I, I that. I mean, that's, that's incomprehensible to me, because that would be the, the summation of, uh, of, of 10 to the 90th particles in, in some kind of a probabilistic uh, way over, over time, every uh, Planck's second. Or, I mean, it just seems bizarre. Uh, the moon is made up of a very large number of particles. Yes. Uh, if you want to describe, forget about space-time for the moment, if you want to describe the state of the moon, you could write down a wave function that would have 10 to the 40th degrees of freedom okay. uh, in it, right? And then uh, that would describe the state of the moon. But we're not interested in the state of what every little atom is doing inside, inside the moon. We're only interested in, in typically, in its motion. So you coarse grain and um, you uh, describe only the motion of the center of mass of the moon. And so you can write down a state uh, that is a product of everything inside and the motion of the, uh, the center of mass motion. Then you integrate out all those other degrees of freedom and you just describe the motion of the moon. Okay, so ap apply that way of thinking to the wave function of the universe. Where, where is it today? What can you do today? And what is the potential in the future? There are different theories of the wave function of the universe. Uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, if you have a wave function of some system and you don't know what it is, in principle, you could find it by replicating the conditions under which it was created, making a whole lot of measurements, and then you discover what the wave function is. That's not possible in cosmology because there's no, we can't replicate the universe, stand outside it, and count what's going on. So a wave function of the universe has to be part of um, the fundamental theory, What's, what physicists sometimes call, Weinberg used to call, the final theory yeah. right, of everything. So today's final theories consist of two pieces, a theory of dynamics, evolution, like string theory, and a theory of the quantum state. And you can't get, um, if you don't have both, you don't have any predictions at all. Uh, people make predictions sometimes with, uh, often, right, with assumptions, hidden assumptions about what the state <coughs> and the state is. But strictly speaking, you need both. Uh, my teacher, Gelman, used to describe this to me in the following way. He said, it's like the I Ching. Right? Uh, if you, it's not enough just to have uh, the book of changes, right, meaning essentially the wave function. You also need the pin, the description of 
what the rest of the universe, what the alternatives are for the universe. We have both of those, uh, and uh, incorporating a notion of how they, the fundamental theory of how they evolve, then you get predictions for the whole thing. Okay, I, I'm still not getting the point, the difference between the universe and an individual quantum system. With an individual quantum system, by, by fundamental definition, you have to take a measurement, there has to be an observer, it doesn't have to be sentient, but some kind of an observer through a measurement, and that's obviously impossible in the universe, because by definition you're defining it as a closed system of the whole thing. Let's forget about um, space-time degrees of freedom. Assume space-time is fixed. Then let's consider a universe that's just in a very large box, 20,000 megaparts on the side. Okay. All the particles and you, right? Everything is everything. in the box. Right. Okay, that's described by some state. It doesn't have gravitational degrees of freedom by assumption, but it has the wave function as a function of all the positions of all those particles, and you can calculate what goes on in the box. What are the ripples in, in, in the river, if you like? And that doesn't violate the fundamental principle of quantum mechanics. Not, uh, not as. Um, do you mean the uncertainty principle, per chance? No, no, uh, no, no. Just, but just generally that you have to have a measurement, an, an, an independent uh, interaction. Uh, uh, interaction. Uh, we have to have a form of quantum mechanics which is suitable for the problem. Okay. Okay. So it can't be obviously a quantum mechanics of measurements, no. right? right? It's a quantum mechanics of closed systems okay. like this, and starting in um, with the work of Everett in 1957, uh, we understand how to do that. Right. Without quantum mechanics, without measurements, measurements can be described, but they're not fundamental to the theory. Yeah, I just say the multi-world theory that came out of Everett is, is is controversial, and I'm 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 not a necessarily a believer, but I understand the internal consistency of what it what it can do. Uh, it's not controversial on cosmologists. What choice do they have? Uh, well, I, I I would think that they a lot of them would want any other choice other than this multiplicity of, of, of worlds, although maybe if you do it in a, a different style of, of, of alternative histories as opposed to actual worlds, that's a kind of a halfway house. And the multiplicity of worlds isn't fixed. We, as I, um, uh, we can discuss different levels of coarse graining, right? And there are different numbers of histories and different coarse graining descriptions. Let's just take, did you sit on this end or on this end? That's a history yeah. at a certain time. And that's represented in the theory. Uh, I, I, in a, in I've been wondering way. about this. So this. you don't have to have this multiplicity. In fact, it's impossible to have too much multiplicity because then uh, you need the histories not to interfere with one another. Oh. If they were too fine-grained, the, um, the decoherence, as it's called, would fail. I, I've been wor worried about this one question. If, if I go with you on a wave function of the universe, what mm -hmm. happens if there's a multiverse? Uh, we would have a larger universe to apply quantum mechanics to. It depends on what you mean by multiverse, of course. But a typical... Um, An inflationary multiverse. Yeah, okay. So it just means you have to deal with a very large... Um, but it, it doesn't perturb your overall approach. No, in fact, it. we calculate in it, right, and with it. Uh, I myself... I, I'm relieved to right. tell that you can deal with a multiverse. But I have to tell you in confidence that every time we, we do one of, those, one of those calculations, we use very simple models in which lots of degrees of freedom are just eliminated. Sometimes it's called mini superspace. And we calculate in those models and hope that as we extend the calculation to finer and finer grain situations, that the results of those calculations would be robust. That's how we make our daily bread, so to speak.